So news broke yesterday about a major concession from Ukraine to Russia. Uh, they're basically openly saying now uh, and giving into really the core demand, or at least nominally the core demand from Vladimir Putin. So let me go ahead and throw that up on the screen here. Um, this is in Newsweek. Vladimir Zelensky says Ukraine won't join NATO in his strongest terminology yet. Ukraine's president, Vladimir uh, Zelensky, appears to have accepted that his country will not become a member of NATO, and one of the demands made by Russia uh, before it invaded, according to, sorry, the, the type, the letters are small for me here, let me make it bigger. According to a translation of his comments in a speech, Zelensky said that Ukraine had realized it would not become part of the Western military alliance. For years, we've heard the opposite, open doors, however... It is not, he said Tuesday, according to Ukrainian news outlet Truka. Our people understand this, and we're, we are beginning to count on our own strength, he added. Media outlet Nexta quoted Zelensky as saying, We realized that Ukraine will not become a member of NATO. We understand this. We are adequate people. Kiev needs new formats of interaction with the West and separate security guarantees. Zelensky has repeatedly called for NATO to set up a no-fly zone above Ukraine to prevent the barrage of attacks coming from Russian forces since President Vladimir Putin announced the invasion on February 24th. Last week, Zelensky told ABC News that he had cooled down about Ukraine's bid to join the alliance long ago. He said this came after we understood that NATO is not prepared to accept Ukraine. So <clears throat> behind the scenes, um, it's very likely that... So step one is like, do you want to be a member of NATO? And, uh, you know, according to the numbers within Ukraine, the answer is yes. It's not overwhelming. I don't know. I forget what the exact number I read was. 56% maybe say they do want to be part of NATO. The government wants to be part of NATO. But, you know, step two is, well, does NATO want you? And at the very least, Germany vetoes it. And they're like, well, we don't want, well, why wouldn't Germany want Ukraine and NATO? Well, obviously they have very deep business ties with Russia, or at least they had very deep business ties with Russia, and they got about half of their natural gas from Russia. So they knew that might threaten their business relationship, so they didn't want Ukraine and NATO. And then perhaps France was against it too. We don't know the specifics, but I'm sure behind the scenes there were a number of countries um, that were saying, look, we just don't want them in the military alliance. Okay. So now we get the acknowledgement from Ukraine in no uncertain terms, very clear language. We're not going to be members of NATO. We're just not going to be. Now, Putin, when he lists his grievances, this was... Honestly, the main one, this is the main one where he says the problem is NATO has been expanding and, uh, hey, we have some red lines. One of the red lines is Ukraine can't be in NATO. And um, one of the arguments he gave when he decided we're going to go in, we're going to invade is I got to do it because the red line is being crossed and uh, they want to join NATO and they might join NATO. So this is like a defensive thing on my part. That's one of the main points he made over and over. Now, <clears throat> notice something. At least as of the time of this recording that I'm talking to you right now. Russia didn't withdraw from Ukraine. But hold on, you got like, what you say is your main demand, it just got met. And you didn't withdraw from Ukraine. So, what am I supposed to make of that? What am I supposed to think of that? I mean, it looks to me like, maybe, that wasn't your main concern. If it was, well, here's an off-ramp, dog. Here's an off ramp. And he didn't take it. Now, I bring this up for another reason, too. Zelensky kind of admitted also on February 21st, before the invasion, he said, Ukraine joining NATO is a dream. He said, quote, a dream. And it's probably not going to happen. In so many words, he said that. Now, this is the strongest language he's ever used, but he still used some Pretty strong language and clear language on February 21st. Now, after Zelensky had already said that, Putin turns around, gives the speech about like, hey, we have to do this because of NATO expansion, and then invades. So the reason why this is so important is because it's now, it's not debatable anymore, guys. It's not up in the air. Now, can you say NATO is a part or was a part of the calculation uh, on on the side of the Russian government to do this. I'm comfortable with that. You could say it's a part of it. But it clearly is not the whole story. It clearly is not the whole story. So, 
just understand that, that like, what's interesting to me is when it comes to the U.S. government, people understand that like the, the face value claims of the U.S. government need to be challenged and need to be questioned. And so with the war in Iraq, like, oh yeah, we're doing this because of 9-11 and because, uh, I don't know, Saddam was working with Osama bin Laden. Now that turned out not to be true. And then they kept moving the goalposts. Oh no, it, uh, weapons of mass destruction. He's got weapons of mass destruction and that's why we're going to do it. And of course the implication was, and he's going to, and he's going to use them. Like he's going to bomb Cleveland or something. This was the implication. And everybody, every step of the way, or at least rational thinking people were like, that doesn't really add up. So the, I, the reasons why you tell me you're doing it are not the actual reasons why you're doing it. What are your real motivations? What I don't understand is why there's a, a mental block for doing that with other powerful states. It's not like the U.S. is the only large state, large powerful state that lies. It's also the case with Russia. And so we got to dig a little deeper here. We got to think about these things more objectively. You don't just take it at face value. Because again, if you take it at face value, well, what's the takeaway? Okay, dog, you just won on your, your biggest claim. The thing that you said was the most important. Ukraine can't join NATO. Well, I got two times they came out and said, we're not joining NATO. So are you going to withdraw? You're not going to withdraw. You didn't withdraw. So then you get into the real conversation. Well, what's it really about? Maybe NATO was a part of it, a small part of it. But if you listen to the rest of Vladimir Putin's speech, and you read between the lines. Now, he never came out and said the thing that I think might be the biggest factor, which is they just found a tremendous amount of natural gas off the coast of, coast of Crimea, and then he went and took Crimea. They found that in 2012, then in 2014, he went and took it. We now know there's natural gas, in, not only in eastern Ukraine, but also in western Ukraine, and he invaded all of Ukraine. My guess is, since he has a petro state, since he's so reliant on oil and natural gas, he wanted it for that reason. My guess is he also wanted it for geopolitical and geostrategic reasons of reforming some semblance of the Russian Empire and trying to bring it back to its former glory. In fact, again, he said as much. The only thing he hasn't really said, which I think is still a major factor, is we want the natural gas and the oil. That's what we want. But outside of that, he's given every reason under this uh, denazification. Um, the blood and soil. The Ukraine's kind of a fake state. It used to be ours. Now it's not ours. Well, it should really be ours again, et cetera, et cetera. So... There are stated reasons, and then there are unstated reasons, and I think you look at both of them, and you try to make the best calculation you can in terms of why he's doing what he's doing. But again, the main point here is, there was a, a complete and utter concession on what he says is his main concern, Putin does. And there's no acknowledgement of it. There's no, all right, cool, great. Shake on it. We're done here. Let's go. No, he's still there. He's still there. And so, I don't know, hopefully there's some diplomacy going on behind the scenes, but what kind of a deal is going to be acceptable? And the way these things work, understand, usually nobody's going to be happy with the deal, right? Like, everybody's going to be annoyed by the deal, everybody's going to be pissed off by the deal. The West is going to think they got screwed, uh, Russia's going to think they got screwed, but you got to give people enough of something where they turn around and can, you know, say to their population, we had a total and complete victory. Like, that's the gist of it. Um... I hope there's some kind of negotiated solution. I hope there's some kind of off-ramp here. But, you know, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. And um, it's definitely noteworthy, yet again, that Zelensky comes out and says, you know what? You got it. On your biggest thing, you got it. No NATO. Boom. And um, troops are still there. There hasn't even been a, a slight de-escalation on the Russian side after Zelensky said this. So... Everybody needs to definitely don't spread the idea that it's all about NATO. Clearly it's not. Clearly it's not. Now understand, I don't blame you if you thought that at some point. I thought that at some point. I thought it was almost all about NATO. But then the more time goes on, the more you learn, the more you see the facts on the ground, you realize, uh, no, it's not. It's not. And the other thing it's definitely not about, I'll, I'll end on this point, is quote-unquote denazification. You know, hey, a lot of Nazis in Ukraine, and he's just going in there to take out the bad guys. Sounds a lot like, hey, Iraq's got a lot of terrorists. We're just going in there to take out the bad guys. Doesn't really make much sense. And also, uh, Ukraine definitely does have a Nazi problem. The Azov Battalion, at least 20% of the Azov Battalion is card-carrying neo-Nazi. Um, but Russia has a neo-Nazi problem, too. They have a far-right problem, too. 
And the numbers are clear. If anything, the numbers might be even more in Russia than it is in Ukraine. So is Vladimir Putin going to invade himself to, to get rid of the toxic ideology? No, it's not actually about that. I think you'd be really naive to think it's about that. In fact, in Ukraine, the far right parties only got like 2% in the last election. So anyway, um, Zelensky saying no NATO. It would be it would also be helpful if Biden and and um, NATO came out and said, yeah, no NATO, because that would be an extra layer of pressure on Putin. Like, all right, what are you going to do? We gave into your key demand. But um, ultimately, as everybody's learning, perhaps it's really not about that. And there are other ulterior motives. Hey, y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.